Good day everyone, welcome to ITS 300 Web Development 1. For this week, we will be having a pre-recorded class instead of a live online class. This is due to the university memo ordering us instructors to render a work from home. But unfortunately, the internet speed here in our place is not reliable for serving live online classes. Therefore, we will pre-record our class instead and upload it online for everybody else to watch later on. So this may be a little bit different, but our method would still be the same. That means after this class, there is going to be an assessment of your learning through Google Form, which the link will be shown later on. And of course, an assignment. So be sure to watch, listen, and understand this class attentively. All right. So my name is Julius Publico. I'll be your instructor for this week. So our first lesson is going to be a two-part discussion of the World Wide Web. And for this week, we will discuss the first part. So if you have any questions or concerns about this class, uh, you can go to minty.com and use the code 2206301 or post your questions to the comment section once this class is recorded or uploaded to our Facebook group or on our respective Facebook chat groups. Okay, so to start with, let's have a review on our past learning. So in our past um, class, we discussed about, or basically it was our course orientation. We discussed about learning management systems, particularly Google Classroom and Edmodo. We also discussed our course requirements. And lastly, we discussed the tools for web development. Now, if you haven't watched the course orientation yet, uh, copy this link, or you can click this image once I've already uploaded a soft copy of this presentation to our Facebook group. So for today, we will be discussing, again, the first part of the World Wide Web, and that will include the Internet and the World Wide Web, classification of websites, and understanding how the web works. Let's say the introduction on how the web works. All right, to get started. So think about or imagine you are going to look up for the best build for a hero on your favorite mobile game on the internet. Question would be, what website are you going to visit? How long will it take for you to see the result? Were you able to get the result that you want? And if so, how does the internet provide you with a result? What are the process, processes behind how it works? So, the World Wide Web. We use it almost every day for doing our research, communicating with our friends and families, watching our favorite videos, streaming our favorite movies, and many more. To many, the World Wide Web has been a favorite place to hang out during our free hours. But how exactly the World Wide Web works? What are the sequences of activities being done the moment we enter the website address and get the result we want. Okay, so for this lesson, we will introduce you the fundamental technology of web development, particularly the World Wide Web and how it works. Our goal is to build an in-depth understanding of all the underlying technologies behind the success of using a massive network of shared information, the World Wide Web. So to become web developers, we need to understand first what the World Wide Web is, or simply just the web, how it works, and what are the underlying technologies that make it all work. This is to equip us with the knowledge of what do we do and why are we going to do it. And first is to understand the difference between the World Wide Web and the Internet. This is commonly the mistake that we are that we always run into how how do we determine the difference between the internet and the world wide web 
So the internet is the term used to refer to the massive network of billions of computers around the globe. These are the computers that are connected using different network medium to share and receive data. Okay, so if there are two or more computers connecting to each other, basically they are already on a network. However, if we talk about millions of computers around the globe that is connected together to share, to share and receive or transmit data, basically, that is internet. The World Wide Web, however, is just a way of transmitting data over the internet. This is through the use of Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP, and Hypertext Markup Language, or HTML. Now, if, you, if you can remember, the internet is the um, the internet is the connection of millions of computers around the globe that is used to transmit data. The World Wide Web is a way of transmitting the data. Okay, so think of it as let's say your house and your friend's house. The distance between your house and your friend's house. Now, how are you going to visit your friend's house? Okay, so let's discuss how are you going to visit your friend's house given that you are on your house, okay? First is you need something to connect your house to your friend's house, okay? What does it mean? There is some, there should be a way for your house, uh, this should be a way for you to go to your friend's house. In what way? Through, through a road, okay? So using the road, then your house and your friend's house are already connected. Now, how are you going to you? How are you going, uh, what are you going to do for you to go to your friend's house? Now, you can either walk or if you have a skateboard, you can skate your way to your friend's house. Or if you have a bike, let's say your friend is a few blocks away from your home, then you can have your bike and then bike your way or pedal your way to your friend's house. However, if your friend's house is located, let's say, a few towns away from yours, then you could either ride any vehicle or, let's say, a bus and ride your way to your friend's house. Now, why are we talking about this? So the connection between your house and your friend's house using the road, through the road, is comparable to describing the internet. Your house and his house are connected using the road. So it's like an internet. And then the skate excuse me, the skateboard, the bike, and the bus or the way of transportation is comparable to the World Wide Web. Okay? So let's let's discuss it using computers. So let's just say there are um, right now, in our illustration, we cannot draw millions of computers, so we will just go into the, discuss it simply with two computers. Now, if the two computers are connected together using any network medium, then we already have a network, okay? Or we already have an internet, okay? So how are we going to transmit data from one computer to another? One way would be the World Wide Web. So let's say, for example, this computer will send a request, an HTTP request to another computer or let's say a server, and the server will send back the requested content, web content, back to the original computer using the World Wide Web. Now, it could be either HTTP requests or if you have mail, an email rather, if you have any tweets, Facebook likes, those are just examples of how the data has been transmitted from one computer to another using the World Wide Web. Okay? So you see the difference now between the internet and the World Wide Web. So maybe you can ask what is the correct term if you're going to search for, um, if you're going to search for, let's say, a recommendation for the best build of your favorite hero for your favorite mob mobile game how are you going to describe it or how are you going to phrase it are you going to search it on the internet or on the world wide web
Okay, that's for everybody else to research. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So next, we will be discussing websites. So since this is web development, and websites are usually the collection of web pages that con constitutes to the World Wide Web. It is published on a web server. Websites are usually used as an effective medium in sharing information and serving the purpose of any organization. So let's say, for example, how will the government, how will the government um, give information aside from, or how, how the government, or let's say the Department of Health, how would the Department of Health um, disseminate an information aside from the TVs, newspapers, and radios? So they will use website. And websites are considered to be an effective medium or effective media in sharing information. Okay, so websites are usually used an um, effective medium for sharing information and serving the purpose of most organizations. It could be either commerce, entertainment, education, government, and of course, our favorite social networking. Websites can be classified according to how it renders its contents, how it manages its data, and its user interactivity. In general, there are two classifications of websites, static and dynamic websites. Uh, static websites. Static websites contain non-interactive and fixed contents. Users can only read and view its content without performing any other activities. And static websites are mostly developed using hypertext markup language or HTML and cascading style sheets, CSS. You will know more about HTML and CSS soon as you go along with our class or with, with our course rather. So think of it if you maybe you've already um, you've, you've already encountered static websites. So whenever you whenever, for example, you Google something and then you you click a link and then you will see a website that doesn't have any Functionality that means you can only read and view what its content you cannot comment you cannot like you cannot uh, let's say make any computations and um, Any other activities rather than just reading or uh, reading the content and viewing the content rather than that is a static website. Dynamic websites, however, can perform complex functionality and returns data based on the user's preference. The dynamic websites are interactive. Users can manipulate the website to produce the desired content. Okay, so let's say, for example, YouTube. How are you going to watch your favorite video using YouTube? First is you're going to search for it. Then you'll be given with this search result and then you're going to select the video that you're going to watch now is it going to be similar now if you have another friend who are watching youtube video and she decided to watch a different video do you have the same content no because the content that you're seeing right now or that the content that you're seeing on youtube is different from the other because you set the preference Unlike the static website, that since there are no functionality, there are no other options. So whenever um, all the people, all the viewers would have the same content. However, in dynamic, co different viewers, different contents. Okay. Okay. Let's try to understand that by this example. Let's say, for example, you another example of a dynamic dynamic website is booking. Um, an online ticket, let's say a travel ticket. All right. So to book your travel, or let's say um, a traveler books an airplane ticket online. To do so, he has to select the travel destination, set the date of flight, choose the ticket classification, and other amenities. The website, the website will then compute the ticket costs on the data entered by the user and generates the proper result. Now, this type of interactivity is not available on static website. Okay?
Now, of course, static dynamic websites. Which one to select? Uh, which one to build? Which one is appropriate for your company or your organization? Or which one would be perfect for you? Now, let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages of both of this classification of website. Let's start with static websites. So, advantages of static website. One, easier to develop. Building static website does not require advanced web development skills like server-side scripting. So, most static websites are constructed using basic structure only, like I said, HTML, CSS, thus making the development much easier compared to dynamic websites. So, once you already have a basic understanding about HTML and CSS, then you will be able to create a static website for you. Another advantage, cheap to develop. So since development is easier, the development is also cheaper since there is no need to hire an advanced web development expert to build a site. So that is this, this advantage are for organizations that are planning to build their own website. So if decided to choose static website, then they're just going to hire a developer or let's say a cheaper developer because again, they don't have to hire the advanced web developer because they're only be creating a website built with HTML and CSS. Now, cheap to host. Hosting the website is, is equally cheaper since there are no extra features that require additional costs. Hosting, what is host? Uh, hosting is the process of uploading the website onto the internet so that the users can start browsing it. Now, most hosting services require additional payments for dynamic websites when adding services like email services, database, etc. So, email services, databases, um, these are the features required for dynamic websites. However, since you have a static website, you don't need for these extra features, thus keeping the costs down. Now, of course, static website obviously has its own disadvantages as well. One of it, one of one of which is updating the content is more complicated. Why is that so? Since the content is fixed and non-interactive, updating the content needs to be manually structured. This includes manually editing the codes, rehosting the website, thus updating its content can also be time consuming. Okay, so for example, you've already hosted your website and then it got outdated. Okay, you post or you host your website this month and next month another content must be added to the website. No, you cannot just edit it right away, like type the contents. You have to manually change the codes. So that means you have to rehire your web developer again so that they will you will be able to add the simplest of update for your website. Okay? Second, site is not as useful. Static contents can only be viewed and read. There are no additional functionalities that make the content as useful as possible. So since basically the site is only as good as reading and viewing, there are no additional um, additional feature that will allow the users to have their own preference as to what to view and how they are going to view it. Okay, and then another disadvantage is it's not suitable for the long run. Site cannot use um, site is not useful in keeping up with the updates and trends. Apologize for the grammar error, error there. But um, since updating its content consumes a lot of time and resources, static websites are usually not particularly useful for any businesses or organization in keeping up with the latest trends and constant update. So if you own a website, if you represent or a, a website that represents an organization and the organization um, involves a lot of update, so static websites may not for you. Okay, let's talk about the advantages of dynamic websites. First, obviously, interactivity. 
Dynamic websites offer additional functions for users to customize their contents based on their preference. Dynamic websites are preferred by most businesses and organizations due to its user engaging characteristics. Okay, so just like how we did the airline ticket booking a while ago. You can't do that in static websites. If you you want dynamic websites to work for such a functionality, it is because it gives the user capability to customize their contents according to their preference. Okay, so basically, just like how we discussed it a while ago, um, viewers can uh, put can it put their name, set their destination, and set um, other amenities, and then they'll get the the amount. So not everybody will have the same amount. Not everybody will have the same um, details, um, travel or destination details, or something like that. Therefore, the dynamic website is perfect for those kind of functionality. Another advantage is it's easy to update. Most dynamic websites are built with unique functionality that allows content to be updated easily. This is through the use of a website administrator's page, also called a webmaster page. A webmaster will be given the capability to update any contents, thus there is no need um, for web development expertise in managing the websites. Now, this is really important in building a dynamic website. To make the dynamic website easier to update, then there has to be a certain functionality that will allow the user, regardless if he or she is not a web developer, to update the contents of the website. Okay, And that is, again, the administrator's page or the webmaster's page. Now, this webmaster's page should have the ability to let the user update the contents of the website. In that way, the owner, or let's say, he or she will no longer have to ask or to hire an, a webmaster or let's say a web development expert to update the contents of the website. Okay. Another advantage of a dynamic website is its responsiveness. This is the ability to adopt the different screen sizes and resolutions. Now, Website responsive refers to its ability to adapt to different screen and resolutions and orientations. So dynamic websites like Facebook, Google, YouTube, etc. can adapt to both mobile and desktop screens without getting messed up. Okay, so if you can observe, Facebook looks different when you are using a desktop and Facebook is different when you're using a mobile phone. How is that? It's because of the website's responsiveness. So that is one of the things that is very uh, that we that you need to on, uh, think about once you are designing or building a dynamic website. You have to think about the website's responsiveness because not everybody will have the same type of phone. That's have not everybody will have the same type of browser or desktop. Okay, a lot of people will are going to use desktop. And a lot of people are going to use mobile devices. Now, it's important to make sure that they can transfer from one device to another. The website can be shown properly or will display properly to desktop computers and mobile devices. Okay, another advantage of a dynamic website is easier navigation. Dynamic websites allow users to transfer from one page to another without having any problems. And of course, dynamic websites has their own, has its own disadvantages as well. First is being very expensive. Now, developing a dynamic website will require advanced web development skills. Let's think about that. Therefore, advanced web developers are needed to develop the website, adding to the expensiveness of the project. Now, hosting dynamic web um, websites can also cost higher due to additional functions that may be added to it. Now, it could be either email services, databases, and etc. Basically, this will cost more, or this will have an additional cost once you are going to host your website. However, once developed and once hosted, there will be no need for any additional expenses for updates and or 
changes. So another disadvantage is slow processing. Unlike static websites, web servers require additional processes to render the scripts used on the website before it will be sent back to the browser or any client. Therefore, dynamic websites are usually slower to load compared to static websites. Okay, so dynamic websites, since there are lots of scripts and lots of things that are going on, so that means the web server, or let's say the server that hosting the website, will have, um, will require additional processes. Now, if your internet speed is not really strong, then that means in some cases, your, your the desktop, or let's say the, the website, w may fail to load. All right. So there are a few advantages and disadvantages of both static and dynamic websites. Deciding which one of the two is better, um, better than the other, will depend on specific needs and purposes. Many people prefer static websites because of its simplicity of overall development, and many people prefer dynamic websites due to its interactivity and functionality. Okay, so this is going to be the last part of our last discussion, uh, last um, topic that we're going to discuss for this class, how the web works. Now, exactly how the World Wide Web works. The process of how the web works can be summarized into a series of interactions between three different systems, namely clients, servers, and lastly, the domain name system or DNS server. So let's talk about clients first. So what are clients? Clients are the devices and software that request and render web contents. This includes web browsers, online games, music and video streaming applications, online shopping applications, and many more, okay? So long as that particular software, hardware or software um, requests and requests and render web contents, those are clients. Servers, however, are applications that deliver web content or services to clients. Domain name system or DNS server is a hierarchical naming system or network devices so it serves like a phone book of the internet but instead it a phone numbers it uses IP or internet protocol addresses now we are going to discuss how exactly these three systems work um, work together for you to be able to get their uh, web content that you require every time that you request a web content so let's take a look at the examples of web clients so we have of course the devices we have uh, web browsers we have online games shopping um, applications online shopping applications uh, streaming applications and many more okay so here is an illustration on how the web works first is So see, we have the three different systems here. We have the client, DNS server, and the web server. And notice how the arrows goes from the client through the internet, the DNS, and the web server, back to the internet, and back to the client. So basically, all of these processes are done using through the internet. Okay, so the client, for example, you are going to search for a website now, the client will send the URL to the DNS server to get the IP address. Okay, so the URL or HTTP request will be sent to the DNS server to get the website's IP address. So first is what is URL? A URL is a unified resource locator. Or I'm sorry, URL or unified resource locator is a web resource that specifies the location of the website. Okay, so let's just say this is the the address. So it, it can be it can be compared to an address, all right. And 
IP or Internet Protocol address is a numerical labels assigned to the web server where the web content is located. So if we're going to understand what our URL as well as IP is, let's compare it to when you are trying to call somebody using your phone. Now, if you're going to call somebody on your phone, you can either go to your phone book. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you can either go to your phone book, search for the URL. What, what do you mean by URL? Look for your contact name. For the contact name whom you're going to call let's say you're going to call your friend you're going to look for the url i'm sorry the contact name on your phone book and then call right or if you don't if you haven't saved the if you haven't saved the contact information to your phone you can just type in the ip address what do you mean by the ip address that is the contact number all right so see the difference you can either use the the in calling somebody you can either use the saved contact information or you can type in the phone number but it's going to work just the same okay so going back the url will be sent to the ip address uh, i'm sorry the dns server to get the ip address now once the ip address is located the ip address is used to locate the host web server okay now the web server will then um, collect the web content, convert it to an HTML form, and the HTML form will be sent back, or the web content will be sent back to the client in the form of an HTML. And the HTML will be rendered by the client so that you can see the contents. Okay, so let's have another example. Now, here. Let's say we, we are going to search for the Norsu website. So we type in norsu.edu.ph. Okay, what happens once every time that we type the URL on the browser, the URL will be sent to the DNS server, the domain name system server. And the DNS server will find its IP address. Okay. So once the DNS server find the IP address for nurso.edu.ph, the IP address will be sent to the web server, okay, to the web server to locate the contents for that particular um, page that you are trying to search, okay. So once the web content is generated, it will be converted into an HTML form, and the web content will be sent back to the client. Okay, and in HTML form again, and then the client, which is the browser, are going to render it so that you can view the contents of the website. Okay, so it may be a little complicated, but we are going to discuss the how the web works in details, in more detail, on our next class. Okay, so this process is going to be the same when you are, let's say, you are performing a basic attack on your enemy hero on your favorite online game or searching the song you want to listen on your music streaming application and just about any activities done through the World Wide Web. Okay, so right, we are, right now we are, only, we are only illustrating how the web works when it comes to searching the website searching the website, um, for example, just like what we did, the nurse.edu.ph. But th it would be the same concept when you are, let's say you are playing your favorite online game. So let's say you, when you are performing a basic attack, okay? So once you press the attack button, your phone, or let's say you're playing Mobile Legends, when you press the uh, basic attack bo um, button, then your the application, which is Mobile Legend, will send a request to the, to the web server to get the, um, yeah, to, will send a request to the web server and send back the, um, will send back the request back to your phone, di ba? Ni attack mo, ni click mo sa attack, ni, ang, ang imong phone ni send a request dito sa web server that you just perform the basic attack and then the web server will go back 
to the client, which is your phone, to let you know that you've already create a performed attack. Okay. So imagine if this happens. Imagine if this happens. Uh, imagine how this happens all very fast, right? So that's why if you can remember when playing, kinalantanga dapat mubo ang ato ang latency ping. Okay, that because that will um, that will af affect the performance of your game. Okay, so I think that's it for today. Again, we will going we are going to discuss the how the web works in more detail on our next class. So for sections C and D, this is going to be the assessment. So kindly fill up the form to assess your learning. The link will be displayed on your screen or you can just click the link once I've already uploaded a soft copy of this presentation online. So deadline would be November, uh, Friday, November 6, 2020 at 11.59 p.m. Okay. So for your assignment, the assignment will be uploaded in our Google Classroom. Make sure you've already joined and check the Google Classroom as, as soon as you've done watching this class. So again, deadline would be Friday, November 6, 2020 at 11.59 p.m. There will be no more submissions after that. And then it will be added to your, um, it will be added to your um, grade. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you so much for thank you so much for um, making this part of the video. Make sure to attend or make sure to fill up the form, or the assessment form, and then comply assignments before the scheduled deadline. So thank you. Keep safe and God bless.